let's talk about all the upcoming fantasy releases for the second half of the year. If you know me, I love doing these anticipated release videos. I have this one and then I also do a romance focused one that I will be posting sometime in the future. If you've been around my channel, you may notice that I have not been posting as frequently. I've decided to kind of just change the way that I run my YouTube channel and instead of trying to post every single week, posting sporadically when I have ideas, quality over quantity, that way I just feel less stressed. I love making YouTube videos, like genuinely I've been doing it for four years and I don't think I ever want to give it up, but I just felt like posting once a week every week when I didn't always have ideas was just putting like this strain on me. Life is busy, um, I got engaged, <laughs> so I've been planning a wedding, that's kind of stressful, and I just feel like it will fit in with my life better to just really genuinely want to be picking up my camera to film when I am filming these videos. So with that being said, I do have a new video to film today, and we are going to be talking about my most anticipated releases. I do these videos twice a year. This is going to be focusing on YA fantasy with some adult fantasy, but mostly YA. Um, and I just love talking about YA fantasy. It's like one of my favorite genres. It always has been and it always will be, even as I branch out to other genres. And I just can't wait to talk about all the amazing books that are coming out later this year. So I will be detailing the books that I'm excited for that are coming out in July through December. And we will be talking about a lot. So these summaries are not going to be super detailed, but just enough that you get the point of what the plot is. First up on July 19th is These Twisted Bonds by Lexi Ryan. This is a sequel to These Hollow Vows, and Lexi Ryan is known as a romance writer, and she is branched to like the YA new adult romance, and it's Faye. It's a love triangle between these two guys on the cover. Bree's sister was stolen by one of the Faye kings, and then she goes to try and get her back, and then she gets tangled up with these two Faye men. I am really excited for this one, but I've been waiting until the second book comes out to read it so that I can read them together, because I do believe that it's a duology, so I kind of like with duologies to just read them together and then you just get the whole story in one go. Next on July 26th is Violet Made of Thorns by Gina Chen. I have been hearing a lot of pre-release buzz for this book. I'm very excited. And this cover is so pretty. It is pitched as a darkly enchanting fantasy about a morally gray witch, a cursed prince, and a prophecy that ignites their fate twisted destinies. Ooh. Basically, Violet is a court prophet and she kind of just like lies about the prophecies that she's making and so when this prince is about to become king, he's like, I'm totally going to strip her of her role and she's like, no, she's going to do something about it. But then she awakens a curse. So that kind of sucks and she, her adventure starts in there. Also on July 26th is Master of Iron by Trisha Levenseller. If you know me, I'm a Trisha Levenseller stan. I've read everything that she's released so far, and I just love her work. Master of Iron is the sequel to Blade of Secrets, which I read last year and genuinely love so much. It is about a sword maker with anxiety, and she basically makes this really powerful sword and gives it to someone that actually ends up being a villain. So her and her sister set out with these two men, a mercenary and a scholar that join them on their journey, and they basically have to get the sword out of the hands of this evil warlord. I really liked the sisterly relationship and the fact that our main character Ziba deals with social anxiety and how that affects her life. It's heartwarming, it's full of action, romance is sweet. I'm so excited for the sequel. Next up on July 27th, there is When the Stars Come Out by Scarlett St. Clair. Scarlett St. Clair is pretty much known for her new adult works like the Touch of Darkness series and King of Battle and Blood. And however, this is her YA works being repackaged and it's in Ordifi- <laughs> I'm not gonna know how to say this. And it's an Orpheus and Eurydice retelling, and it's supernatural, YA. Very excited. I saw Hades Town the musical, which is also an Eurydice and Orpheus retelling musical, and so I'm really intrigued by their story, and I would love to read more retellings about them. Moving on to August. Starting off, we have Wild is the Witch by Rachel Griffin coming out August 2nd. I have an arc, I'm so excited. I picked up The Nature of Witches, which was her debut novel last year on a whim and I absolutely loved it. It was like a soft and whimsical, uh, witchy, urban fantasy and this has the same kind of vibes. Iris is hiding that she's a witch and she's working at a wildlife refugee with her mother and when she gets frustrated, she writes curses that she's never going to cast. 
until one day she gets really mad at her frustrating coworker, and Iris writes this curse for him and she's going to throw it away but then this magical owl comes and steals the curse and if the owl dies the curse will come true so now they have to hunt down the owl I like that it really is like nature based like the nature of witches really had to do a lot with like nature and climate and so it takes nature and the environment and mixes it with fantasy elements so I love that I love that these witches and her work seem to be like very connected to the earth it's awesome next on august 2nd we have the final book in a trilogy here we have the princess will save you i will put up the sequel it's like the queen something i'm sorry i forgot the whole <laughs> whole thing and then we have the final one in the trilogy the king will kill you it was originally supposed to be a duology and then it was expanded so i read this first book two years ago when it came out i loved it it's supposed to have princess bride vibes and basically what happens is that Princess Amarande is like the one that's like the badass, she knows how to fight and like she's just this ruler and when she is going to take over the throne they steal Luca who's the stable boy and he's like this very soft boy, he doesn't really know how to defend himself as well as Amarande does and so she has to go and save him and I just loved this like gender bent retelling of the Princess Bride. Um, it definitely would say it's like loosely inspired like it definitely does not follow the plot of the princess bride that closely but has that kind of like adventure vibe and so i've been waiting for the third book to come out because i love these covers and i would love to maybe re reread this one on audio or maybe physically and then just like binge the trilogy i think that would be so fun on august 2nd this is an adult fantasy and this is the book eaters by Sunyi Don. This seems like a really interesting book. It's about this reclusive family that lives in the moors of England and for them books are literally food and they consume the story and they also like they physically eat the book and they have like the content in their minds and so it's just like this wondrous world of like eating all these books and just like being filled with the stories um however Devon has a child and this child hungers for human minds instead of books I mean that concept blows me away. That sounds so intriguing. On August 9th we have Blood Like Fate by Lizelle Sambury which is the sequel to Blood Like Magic. So this is an urban fantasy about a girl who comes from a family of witches and she has to sacrifice her first love in order to save her family's magic but the problem is she's never been in love so now she has to find someone to fall in love with and sacrifice. Pretty crazy. On August 16th, we have The Drowned Wood by Emily Lloyd Jones. She wrote The Bone Houses, which I read a few years ago and loved. And this is a book that is set in the same universe but follows different people. And it's part heist novel, part dark fairy tale. So Mare is the last water diviner and she is kept under the thumb of this prince and he has done some pretty bad things to keep her in line and so she runs away from him even though she's bound to his service and then when her former handler comes and wants revenge on him as well they form a crew to kind of take down his reign. I'm very interested to see how it's going to tie into the bone houses because it doesn't seem like really that related to their plot at all. But I digress, I will be interested to see. I thought The Bone Houses was a very whimsical, beautiful book, and I'm sure this one will be too. Also on August 16th is the sequel to The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri, and this is The Oleander Sword. So The Jasmine Throne is about two women, Princess Malini, who is trapped in a temple by her brother, and maid servant Priya, who was forced to disavow her birthright and her power and their destinies are tangled. I've literally heard nothing but good things about this book. I do want to pick it up eventually. It's long, it's floppy. Love a good floppy fantasy. So maybe this will be my future. I did almost pick it up today, but I just don't know what I want to read right now. Sorry, my life. Also on August 16th, we have Master of Souls by Rena Baron. This is number three in the Kingdom of Souls trilogy. Kingdom of Souls is about a girl with no gifts who basically must bargain for power to fight her own mother's dark schemes. Sounds like a lot of interesting political and family drama and power and just a very intriguing and interesting story. On August 23rd, we have A Venom So Dark and Sweet, which is the sequel to A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy Island. What's very interesting about this book is usually sequels are published about a year after the first book, because um, the author is writing the second book after the first book goes into the contract, but this duology was bought all at once, so the books are being published only six months apart, and I wonder if that's going to be a business model that is adopted by other publishers, or if it's just a one-off thing. Also, I got the BNN exclusive with this beautiful character art on the end pages, this little teapot on the cover, and again, I think 
is a book that I'm gonna wait until August so I could read both of them together. Ning unknowingly brewed a poison tea for her mother and killed her. And that tea now threatens her sister, Shu. Ning hears of competition to find the kingdom's greatest tea masters. And she travels to the city to compete and potentially win the princess's favor, which may be the only thing that can save her sister. I love a good competition. I love a good cup of tea. This sounds like it could be my cup of tea. And the sequel, of course, where I'm sure we will see more of this amazing story. Last up for August 23rd, we have Babel by R.F. Kuang. She is the author of the Poppy War trilogy and everyone's very excited for her new book, including me, even though I haven't read the Poppy War yet. I will rectify that sometime in the future. <clears throat> but all I know is it's Stark Academia, right? I will read you the full title. Babel, or the Necessity of Violence, an Arcane History of the Oxford Translator's Revolution. And the opening line in the summary is, Traditore, traditore, an act of translation is always an act of betrayal. Ooh. Robin, who was orphaned in Canton and brought to London by a professor and is trained in all of the languages, and then he goes to Oxford to join Babel, which is like their department, I guess, for translation. And there, there's like this magic of silver working where they take meanings that are lost in translation and put them into magical silver bars. And like there's this whole trade around it, and it just sounds like so interesting and unique. And it sounds really cool. Like all the dark academia vibes that I'm looking for. Moving on to the release date of August 30th, we have a few books. The first being The Dragon's Promise, which is a sequel to Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I read this last year and I absolutely loved it. We follow Shiori and she's a princess in her kingdom. And she basically has these magic powers that she's not supposed to use. They're outlawed in the kingdom. And her stepmother sees her using them and like curses her. So all of her six brothers were turned into cranes and if she speaks a word, one of her brothers will die. And so now they are set on a journey to end the curse. I feel like this first book was wrapped up pretty well, but there is going to be more conflict in the second book. And we just look at these illustrated covers, they're so pretty. And I just think oh, this was just such a magical, lyrical, beautiful world. And I cannot wait to return to Elizabeth Lim's writing. On August 30th, we have All of Our Demise by Amanda Foodie and Christine Lynn Herman, which is the sequel to All of Us Villains. All of Us Villains is basically like this town has a Hunger Games-esque competition each generation to determine who is going to control the magic. And basically someone writes a memoir tell-all about this competition. And now the one that is coming up is going to be very highly publicized. So it's like Hunger Games, but with magic. It sounds amazing. And I actually went to the signing for this book so I got to meet these two wonderful authors and hear them talk about their book and it made me so excited to read it. I haven't picked it up yet but I want to which is kind of the moral of the story with this whole video. The last book that I have to talk about for August is Belladonna by Adeline Grace. I am in love with this cover. It just has like that gothic like horror fantasy vibes. I just love it. But Signa is an orphan who's been passed from family to family and she finally goes to the elusive Hawthorne mansion at Thorn Grove and there's basically just a lot of stuff going on there. The patriarch mourns the loss of his wife with these wild parties, their son grapples for control and the daughter has a mysterious illness. But then the mother's spirit appears and then claims she was poisoned. So now Sigma must help them kind of figure out what is going on and catch the killer and she enlists the help of the stable boy but also she has a connection to death the person um, and he's kind of showing her that as they strengthen their connection like how deep the bond goes and I just love those gothic vibes. <music> Moving on to September. Now on September 6th we have Monsters Born and Made by Tanvi Burma coming out and this has to be the coolest arc packaging that I have ever gotten. So it says welcome to the glory race and then it says admit one. It's a ticket it out and see is that and then on the back it has a quote and then you can just put it back in for convenient safety thing then you pull the book out of the case it's not like a hard case it is like a soft case and I got yet another bookmark I'm gonna have so many bookmarks to read this book with and the physical arc itself monsters born to me 
It is a South Asian inspired fantasy. We follow Coral who has grew up battling the monsters that live in the surrounding seas of the kingdom. Her family has been indentured to capture Maristags for the elite glory race, which is a deadly chariot tournament reserved for the upper class. So when Coral fails to capture a Maristag that year and her little sister is going to die because they can't afford medicine for her, Coral does the only thing that she could think of and cheats her way into the glory race. It sounds amazing. I love like race competition themed fantasy books. I love the concept of like these ocean monsters and I'm so excited to sink my teeth into this one. Next up on September 13th is None of the Ninth by Tamsin Muir and this is the third book and I don't I don't know what the series is called but the first one is Gideon the Ninth and the second one is called Hera the Ninth. So it's about a necromancer and it's like in this system of planets that's all i really know about it and i've been told that it's really good to kind of go into blind to this one but it's lesbian necromancer in space sounds like a pretty good combo of things next up on september 13th we have defend the dawn which is the sequel to divide the night by bridge kemmerer i have loved the a curse of dark and lonely series by her and so i picked up this new fantasy series by her look at how shiny it is um and i loved it even more this one follows Tessa and her best friend Wes and basically like there's this plague and the only thing that will cure it is if you take moonflower petals so you take like a preventative dose and then you take more if you're sick. So there's this huge wealth distribution problem where basically like the ruling elite are hoarding all the moonflower petals and the poor people can't get their doses so Tessa and Wes go and they steal the moonflower petals from the elite and give them to the poor people so a very robin hood-esque situation so a particularly cruel act from the king's justice sparks tessa to do something that she would never have done before and she sneaks into the palace to try and fix the situation and she finds out some things that really makes the situation much more complicated but it really has to do with like wealth inequality and fantasy political maneuverings and it's just fantastic on September 13th is The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber, which is the sequel to Once Upon a Broken Heart. I have this beautiful pre-order dust jacket that I love, and this is connected to the Caraval series. Have I read the Caraval series? No, this is what the regular cover looks like. Um, but I want to, and I want to read this. Um, in this book, we are following Jax, who is the King of Heart, who obviously makes an appearance at some point in the Caraval series. I don't know what point, because I haven't read that series yet. Um, and then we have Evangeline who's this lovely lady here. Yeah, Evangeline learns that the love of her life is going to marry someone else and so she makes a bargain with the Prince of Heart, Jax, and all he asks for in return is three kisses. And then she learns that bargaining with an immortal is more dangerous than it appears. I mean, it sounds whimsical, beautiful, like everything I'm gonna love. On September 6th, we have The Sun Bearer Trials by Aiden Thomas. Aiden Thomas wrote Cemetery Boys and Lost in the Neverwoods, and this book is described as Percy Jackson meets the Hunger Games. So these are teen semi-dioses. It's a Mexican-inspired fantasy. Every decade, 10 semi-dioses are selected by Sol, the sun god, to compete in the Sun Bearer Trials, and this is so that Sol's power can be replenished. It sounds up super awesome. Moving on to September 27th, which is a packed day for releases. First up, we have Forest Fall by Lyndall Clipstone. I read Lake's Edge last year and absolutely loved it. It's like this very gothic spooky vibe. We follow Violetta Orletta and her and her brother are living in this village and her brother possesses this like forbidden dark magic. The monster of Lake's Edge, Rowan, discovers her brother's magic and kind of forces them to move to his estate. They learn they're not alone at this estate and it is visited by the Lord Under, who lurks in the dark waters of the Cursed Lake. Rowan is bound to this Lord and he's desperately trying to undo the curse that binds him to this Lord and so they must all work together to get rid of the curse. But it's just like gothic and spooky and so good and I'm so excited to see where the sequel takes us. This cover is gorgeous, the sequel cover is gorgeous, chef's kiss. Next up on September 27th, 2022, we have Fat Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong. This is the like follow-up series to the These Violet Delights duology I have here. I have read the first one, have not read the second one yet, story of my life, yeah, yeah. Um, but this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling with gangs set in 1920s Shanghai. Foul Lady Fortune takes place a few years later following some characters from that series that were side characters. I don't even know the specifics yet because I know that you're supposed to be like kind of blind to that. So it's just more of that 
kind of theme and I'm so intrigued to see what it's gonna be all about. Next is Spells for Forgetting by Adrienne Young. I have read almost all of Adrienne Young's books. I think this one is her adult debut. So this is about a rural island community that is steeped in mystical superstitions and it's haunted by an unsolved murder and this town is upended when the suspected killer comes back to town. I mean, I love small rural island spooky mystery fantasies. This sounds very atmospheric and very intriguing. Next is Princess of Souls by Alexandra Christo. Alexandra Christo is best known for writing To Kill a Kingdom, which is like a mermaid retelling that was really popular a few years ago. And this is a Rapunzel inspired novel. And it's about a teen witch who has been groomed to steal souls for an immortal king and the rebellious boy to whom her fate is tied. I mean, I always love a good retelling and I feel like I've been seeing a lot more Rapunzel retellings lately, which is exciting. And To Kill a Kingdom was like a pretty popular Little Mermaid retelling and so I, I just love retellings. I feel like okay, I'm about to go on a little side rant here, but I did take a class on like the literature of fairy tales in college. Like you had to take a writing course and you could kind of take it on like all of these interesting and different topics. So I took the one on fairy tales and I really learned that fairy tales are just stories that have been passed down. Like they started as oral traditions and then passed down. And like the whole purpose of them is that they evolve over time and are retold. So I just like love that we get so many fairy tale retellings because that is like their purpose in the world is to just be retold over and over. Okay, side note. Also, fairy tales were originally for adults for their entertainment, and then they became like kidified, and now like they're becoming like more mature again. So we'd love to see it. Speaking of mermaids, the next book I have is Soul of the Deep by Natasha Bowen, which is the sequel to Skin of the Sea. Simi is serving as Mami Wata, a mermaid. So she collects the souls of those who die at sea and return them back home. But when a living boy is thrown overboard, she does the unthinkable and allows him to continue to live and now she must make amends to the gods i love a good mermaid story and last but not least in september is kingdom of the feared by carrie maniscalco i love this series here we have kingdom of the wicked and kingdom of the cursed this book was one of my absolute favorites of last year i mean this was one of my favorites of the year when i read it too but this one it went from ya to do adult and it was spicy spicy like not in like the you know a spicy scene every second but there was just like so much tension the tension was chef's kiss kingdom of the wicked is set in like 18th century sicily and it follows amelia and her family owns their own little restaurant and she has a twin sister victoria who shows up dead one day and she is Amelia is just like absolutely distraught and she will do anything to hunt down the person that killed her sister so she enlists the help of a prince of hell he says that he has similar motives because he needs to find a bride for the devil, but all is not as it seems with the Prince of Hell. Um, this is just like Italian inspired, amazing, like ugh, series is so freaking good. So freaking good. I love it. I'm definitely doing a reread before the third book comes out and like, oh my God, I just love it. Sorry if I seem a little insane, but it's a good series. It's one of my faves. And I felt that way about the Stalking Jack, <laughs> Stalking Jack the Ripper series as well. So like Harry Maniscalco, you on my heart. Starting off October, we have The Empress of Time by Kylie Lee Baker, which is a sequel to The Keeper of Night. I have the first book, Book of the Month edition here. This is about Ren, who is a half British Grim Reaper and a half Japanese Shigenami. She doesn't really fit in in London with the Reapers, so she goes to Japan to try and prove herself there, but also realizes that she doesn't exactly fit in there either. And so in her determination to fit in, she takes on this task for the goddess of death and her task is to find and eliminate three dangerous yokai demons. It sounds absolutely amazing and I can't wait for the sequel as well. On October 18th we have Night of the Raven, Dawn of the Dove by Rati Merotra. Kayani has a soul bond with the queen and she's basically been raised to become a guardsman to the crown prince. But when a series of assassination attempts plague the royals, she is shipped off basically to the middle of nowhere with the princes for their safety. However, tragedy strikes and Kayani is torn from the only life that she's ever known and she must find answers from her past to forge her own destiny. 
On October 25th, we have Strike the Zither by Joan He. This is a book inspired by the Three Kingdoms, which is the first of the four classics of Chinese literature. So in the year 414 of the Xin Dynasty, there is chaos abound. Zither is the best strategist to the warlordless Xin Ren. Zephyr is forced to infiltrate an enemy camp where she meets her match in Enigmatic Crow, another strategist. Sounds very interesting. Based off of classic Chinese literature, and I think this cover is stunning. Moving into November. Out on November 8th is Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion, which is the sequel to Legendborn. Legendborn is a King Arthur gender bent retelling who follows Brie. She discovers her powers and goes to join the Legendborn Order, which is filled with the descendants from King Arthur's original knights. On November 1st, we have Sea Sparrow by Kristen Kashor, and this is the fifth book in the Graceling series. We had the three original Graceling books, and now those were released like some time ago, like the first one was in 2009, and starting last year, Kristen Kashor has been publishing more books in the series, and I absolutely love the makeover that they got. I think these new covers are stunning, and it's definitely a series I want to get to soon. So since it's the fifth book, I literally I have no idea what's going on, but I know in the first book, you are basically born with a grace, and our main character is born with the grace of killing. Basically means that she has like a talent for killing above all else, and people want to use that for their own benefit. On November 8th, we have Cursed by Marissa Meyer, which is the sequel to Gilded by Marissa Meyer. I feel like Marissa Meyer is really known for her fairy tale retellings with the Lunar Chronicles, and now we have this new series, and it is a Rumpel Stiltskin retelling. So Sorilda basically tells these tall tales, and she catches the eye of the Earl King, and she's ordered to complete the impossible task of spinning a straw into gold. And she is desperate, so she summons a mysterious boy to her side for a price. Classic Rumpelstiltskin retelling. Love this cover. I think it's so gorgeous. Sequel cover, also gorgeous. I love Marissa Meyer. <laughs> I'm behind on her works, but I do want to read them. Obviously, I own it. Next up on November 8th is The Luminaries by Susan Dennard. And the series is really interesting because it kind of started as like a Twitter prompt where she was talking to her readers and like kind of trying to determine where the story would go. So I think that that's like really interesting that it was like a Twitter choose your own adventure thing and it got turned into a book. So it's a haunted contemporary fantasy about the magic it takes to face your fears in a nightmare filled forest and the metal required it takes to face the dark secrets hiding in the corners of your own family. I love these dark atmospheric spooky books. The cover is really cool, kind of like startling, spooky, love it. On November 29th, we have A Wilderness of Stars by Shay Earnshaw. A mysterious illness cursing all of the land forces a teen girl astronomer to venture across the wilderness in search of the star's message to them that will hopefully save them all. I love things that are like star themed, star focused, so I think that this will be a really beautiful story. Moving on to December, I have one book to talk about in December. I feel like December is a really slow time for book releases, so I usually never have that many to talk about, but I'm so excited for this particular book coming out December 6th. It is The Poison Season by Mara Rutherford. I think this is my favorite cover of all of 2022. It is stunning. It's a Charlie Bowder cover, but like, it's so beautiful. Like, my brain cannot comprehend all of the beautifulness. Lilo lives on her secluded island of Ensla, where outsiders are always given a choice. The bloodthirsty forest or the poisonous lake. Either way, they are never heard from again. She struggles to accept that her brother will be exiled his next birthday if he doesn't show the magic of the community. When Lilo sees a young outsider drowning in the lake, she knows what she has to do, but she will be betraying her entire community to do it. And she begins to question everything about the society that she lives in. Again, like the haunted lake vibes, island vibes, love it. Like This cover is just so pretty, I love it. All right. That is all that I have to talk about today. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a strawberry emoji if you have watched this far. Um, I don't know why I just randomly thought of strawberries. Thank you for watching. Again, I will be posting sporadically on this channel, but you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok where I will be posting more frequently. I'm really excited to kind of shift my channel to this thing that will become more stress-free for me because it's starting to stress me out posting every week. Um, and I just feel like very refreshed and excited to be filming more videos. And it's been really good to get behind the camera after not having done so for a good chunk of time. Um, so yeah, thank you so again for watching and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.